Hi again, it's Matthew here from Matthew North Music. Now, a couple of days ago, I did a video about my trusted Amstrad boombox here, and quite a few of you found that quite interesting, so I thought I would do another video, this time about this boombox here. Now, this is made by Panasonic. It was made in the early 80s, like the Amstrad, and I thought you might find this one interesting, so let's take a look. Well, here it is then. This is the Panasonic SGJ500L, circa 1984. Now, I'm gonna show you the back of it first. So as we look at the back here, nothing too special. If I open this little slot, you can see that we've got space for six D cells for running it on batteries. And here we have a little compartment for putting your mains lead in. It's not actually big enough to hold a UK plug and there's a little slot in here so I would imagine it was designed for a two pin European type connector. We have an extending telescopic aerial. You can see there's two power inputs. There's the figure of eight mains input connector on the left and then on the right you've got an external DC connector and that's all the connections on the back of the machine. First thing I'm going to do is just pop a little cassette in. And as you can hear, it plays back absolutely fine. It's a good quality mechanism on this deck. And I did do some speed adjustment and it does appear to be running at more or less the correct speed. So a uh, good little deck. I'm just going to stop that because I don't want to get a copyright strike on my video. But that's the cassette deck, works like any other cassette deck. If we look at the buttons along here, you can see we've got a free band radio, long wave, medium wave and FM with an FM with a beat cut thing on it. Um, that also goes into mono, so it gets rid of hiss. If I select FM and go into that mode there. There we go, we've got perfect sounding FM radio. Ah. Oh couldn't have timed it better, the archers. If we go to medium wave. So there's our medium wave. It's not exactly great quality. And I'm doing this at night. Let's try a long wave. So there we go, there we've got long wave. So it's, it's all pretty standard for the radio. Now the real beauty of this device is when I press this button here and out pops a lovely little record deck. Now, you might think, oh, this is just the same as those decks that you'd find in those horrible Crosley suitcase record players, but no, this is far better. And I'll show you the first reason this is way better. If you look closely at the platter, if I turn it, you should be able to see that the spindle is turning with the platter. Now, with a lot of the suitcase-based record players, the spindle is actually solid, so it's actually rubbing against the record as it's turning, causing friction, which gives you more wow and flutter and generally isn't particularly good. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is a ceramic cartridge on this deck. However, it does appear to sound pretty good. Now, to give you a quick demo on how the record player sounds, I've got, no surprises, my record, because at the end of the day, I don't want to get any copyright strikes. Now, you have got on here two speeds, 33 and 45. It's set on 45. It's not automatic in any way. It just works as manual. I'll go to phono on there, and then as I bring the arm across, it starts the motor. Now, from the speakers, you probably don't get that good an indication of how it sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the unit straight into the computer and then you can hear what the deck sounds like directly recorded. Okay, I've got a lead plugged into the headphone socket and I've moved the tone control into the middle. 
and the other end of the cable is plugged into my audio interface into the computer. Okay, we've got the computer running on record, and now it's time to start the record. Okay, so that's how it sounds like as a reproduction, and I thought it might be fun now just to see what it sounds like when we record with it. Well, this is the sort of cassette I would have owned around the time that this boombox was manufactured. This is an early 1980s Sony CHF90, and I used to get these from HMV in Exeter, and a five pack was either $3.99 or $4.99, and they were certainly comparable with the TDKD. So I'll pop that into the machine and hit record. Let it get past the leader and then I'll record a few seconds of this record and then I'll play it back to you all in real time so you can hear exactly how it sounds. Okay, that's probably enough of that, just for a little sample. I'll now rewind the tape, put it into tape mode, and we'll play it back. Now, if you take away from the fact that there is some dropout on that tape, and you've got to remember this, this is over 40 years old. It's probably been left in a loft or in a garage or something. And also, you know, old tapes generally don't sound their best right at the beginning. So it's probably not the fairest of comparisons. That being said, for a budget piece of equipment, because this was not considered high end, I still think that's a reasonably respectful recording for something so old. It doesn't have manual record, and this is certainly way, way better sound quality wise than those cheapo uh, portable systems and the sort of cheap all in one Crosley systems that you can buy new today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a great piece of old kit with plenty of life still left in it from an era that we probably won't ever see again. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please think about liking and subscribing and keep an eye out for the next video that I post.